here we are at the start of April. What I wouldn't give for eight days like this in uh, Cape Rat in a month and a half's time. I don't want to get lost and I don't want to add additional miles to my day. Dang it, first navigational error. And so on, and so on. But with regards to the first one, we can't control the weather, so we just got to train. Whereas for the navigational error, no, I should have known where that turn off was. That was a key turn off. Ah, good morning, guys. It is Saturday, the 2nd of July. I am down here on the Avonmore Way because it matches the profile of my next race, which I'll tell you at the end of this, because what I want to do before I move on from the Cape Rat is just pass on a few of my thoughts, hints, tips, advice for anybody thinking of doing this race up in the future. So buckle up, here we go! Oh, oh, oh. The weather. No, we can't control the weather, but we can control how prepared we are for all weather conditions. And Cape Rat Ultra is certainly true. <laughs> Rather severe weather conditions at us this year. So my advice there is just invest in good garb. You know, the good mid layer, the good outer layer. These things are gonna last you years. So pay the two or three, 400 euros for something really good. And hopefully you won't stumble on that first tree stump and rip the shoulder off your jacket. <laughs> okay, next up navigation. When you come to a junction, we'll say, and there's two or three ways you can go and you don't know which way to go, of course you're gonna rely on your navigation. If you're on the open mountainside and there's no distinct trail, of course you're gonna rely on your navigation. The problem arises when you are on a trail like this, eh? very clear, distinct trail. And you look down at your watch and it says, yeah, you're running straight on. So you run straight on and you look down at your watch two minutes later and you realize you're off trail because what you didn't realize the first time is just beyond the rim of your watch. There was a sharp left hand turn onto open countryside. It didn't look like a turn at all. So of course you just went flying by it. So it's those ones, and there's not that many of those. Ah, just one last thing on the watch. Uh, my watch died on one day and almost died on another day. The two particularly long days, day three and day six. Uh, and what I could have done in advance, but I didn't do is turn off all those things that you don't need. We'll say my watch today is using GPS and Galileo. So it's kind of, uh, it's GPS is particularly accurate, but it doesn't need to be as accurate as that on a, long race like that. So certain things, Bluetooth and bits and pieces to minimize the draw on the battery of the watch so that it lasts as long as possible. Okay, moving on to nutrition. I said in my nutrition video that I was going to go down the sugary route and that's exactly what I did. While out on the course, my only nutrition every one of the days was tailwind, bars and gels. That's it, worked really well nothing more to say really on that matter so I think nutrition is very much a, a personal preference and what works for you so it's definitely something that you check out in training and I did feel confident going in that that would work for me and it did every day when you came in you had the chips and soup was what was available if you were in before six o'clock uh, at six o'clock generally that's when they started serving the evening meal one thing in that regard that I would say is that on the shorter days where you do get in early uh, I probably could have done with uh, some form of protein, which I didn't bring with me. Uh, so in future, I would have a protein shake or some form of protein that I can take at the end, just to help rebuild the muscles after the effort of the day. And you know, the forecast for today was rain, 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 rain. What a lovely morning. Okay, next tip is for those people looking to be competitive in the Cape Rat Ultra. Tip here is, you gotta race from day one. You can't decide to sit back on day one and take it easy, see how things unfold. Uh, you really gotta be in that area of 
is this too easy or is this too hard it should be you know in the middle there because what also happens after a couple of days is people like me get a whiff of the podium and you'll have to claw it from my cold dead hand you know the people really dig in to either hold on to positions or try to gain positions and they find an extra energy in those final days that maybe they mightn't otherwise have now I'm pretty sure this bridge wasn't here the last time I came along this way ah lovely oh, I can feel the bounce it's like the shaky bridge in Cork I had a few people ask me about feet and foot care and I'm not sure in that regard whether I have an awful lot of advice to give because I may be a freak and I had no issues really whatsoever ah, I took a wrong turn there or I actually came over the bridge and took a right because there was trails there it looked like the most obvious way to go but when I rechecked with my watch it was the wrong way to go but the advice I would give is I did change my socks every single day even though they almost immediately became wet but it felt nice for about 10 seconds to have a nice dry fresh pair of socks on and the trail shoes that I had on uh, were about a size and a half bigger than I would you know than my standard shoe size so I do think that is a a big benefit it just gives you that space your toes aren't cramped in beside each other and causing that friction that may result in blisters find what works for you but I think you're definitely going up at least half a size and I would say in my opinion at least one size I'll show you the shoes I had on these were the Hoka Speed Goat and I'm gonna say right now they were the wrong shoes for the trail a few different people wore them Hoka Speed Goats main problem with them is they effectively have hardly any lugs at all uh, so if I was going to run the Cape Rat again uh, I wouldn't go up an awful lot uh, but I would definitely go up on the lug size these are effectively glorified road shoes you know and in drier weather maybe I would reconsider but uh, I think there's enough off trail downhill that something with deeper lugs than the Hoka Speed Goats are appropriate course complete I've arrived in the village of Rat Drum since I've never been here before I feel obliged to go up to that church up there don't know why it's the draw of the high ground let's go I thought I'd left the Glenfinnan viaduct behind me okay what else poles please 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 do not attempt to do this race without poles you know a lot of people didn't take them on day one myself included 100% fine what you'll find is that everybody was using them on day three and beyond so you know on a long event like this it's a no-brainer what else have I got okay I had my comfy clothing in the evening I didn't wear compression socks out during race any day but each evening I put on my pair of compression socks the science is out on whether they actually do anything but I believe they do and if you believe then they do and the shoes the change out from sandals to shoes which uh, was also a wise wise move I think if I was going again I would just have the shoes they're comfortable regardless of whether it was sunny or dry ah, and the very last tip that I would give you is to train walking you've probably heard it before it's something that we find hard to do as trail runners when we're on a trail we just want to run but I did go out before work in the morning maybe at lunchtime and in half an hour quite routinely in the run-up to the race in your head you're saying if this was race day and I was walking you know what do I want to be doing achieving because there was a lot of walking and I have no doubt that that walking that I did benefited me that you're able to walk at a good pace for a long time 
just got attacked by a very lively little dog but attacked is probably a bit harsh he was a playful little fellow actually one last bonus tip since it's kind of appropriate to what I'm doing here today is I thought about my next race which is the North Downs Way in just over one month and I want to start training on terrain that is similar to that so that doesn't have any huge climbs and anyway I'm not going to get into that I'll do a separate race video on the North Downs Way but as it relates to the Cape Rat Ultra you know there is a mix of everything in the Cape Rat Ultra so if you want to go out and you want to do training on a mix of everything you don't need to necessarily go out every day and bury yourself up to your hip and bog train on high ground technical ground well, I guess you just got to train on everything guys sorry about that but overall that's it they're my hinge tips advice if I was going to do it again if you think that there's anything I've forgotten to mention or anything you want to know a little bit more on whoa whoa by all means leave a comment down below all right guys stay tuned north downs way 100 scares me in completely different ways but i'll let you know about that in my next video that's it over and out